I'd like to thank whoever set up the lighting because I really need it when I'm looking at my slides. Um, usually when I face a new audience, I like to answer a few uh, personal questions just to get things, um, uh, things out of the way. So the answer to the questions I'm sure you're asking yourselves about me is yes, yes, and no. <laughs> yes, I've driven a truck. Yes, at highway speeds. And no, I did not crash it. <laughs> so now that, we're, now that we're set, is this OK to go? Um, I'd like to thank AMSA again for inviting me to speak today. And uh, Claudine's remarks actually were, were quite helpful in terms of setting up what I'm going to be talking about in terms of the BC trucking industry. Um, my remarks are primarily going to be focused on one occupation, and that is professional truck driver. And the reason for that is because truck drivers are the most ubiquitous position in our industry. And in fact, uh, it, for men, it is the second most likely occupation. So we need a lot of them. And if you think about it, the reason for that is because if you have it, a truck brought it. Everything in this room came by truck. So here's what I plan to cover today. I'm going to start by giving you a bit of background about the BC Trucking Association. And the reason for that is because we're not a sector council. So some of my remarks will be slightly different from, from that of Claudine's. Uh, I'm going to give you some context about our industry. Uh, because a lot of people don't know very much about trucking, our association's strategic HR priorities, issues and projects that are specific to foreign workers that we've been working on for a number of years, the tactics we're employing, and our progress to date. But before I start, um, I want to clarify that our association doesn't believe that we can fix the skills shortage for our industry. We can certainly support, we can help, but it will be up to individual trucking companies and their customers to deal with the challenge together if we're going to be able to affect things in any meaningful way. So there are supporting roles that can be played by everyone, including you in this room, uh, who I'm sure are part of the driving public, the education system, government at all levels, and service providers who can help immigrants navigate our employment landscape. And I'll explain what I mean as I go through my presentation. So with that out of the way, let me tell you a bit about BCTA. We are a well-established industry association. Companies voluntarily belong to our association. We represent about 50% of the trucks on the road, everything from bicycle couriers in downtown Vancouver all the way to B-trains on highways. And if you don't know what a B-train is, ask me after. We also represent motor coaches, waste haulers, and other operators of what we call vocational vehicles. And vocational vehicles don't haul freight, but they are used for a commercial purpose. We have several other categories of membership um, for businesses that provide supplies and services to the trucking industry, related associations, municipal fleets, and shippers, which are businesses that contract with trucking companies. So BCTA's focus is on advocacy, and you'll see that as I go through my presentation. We represent our members with government, and usually that means provincial ministries, but also federal governments, crown corporations, and other agencies. We like to call ourselves the vice president of everything else, because we deal in all sorts of areas like taxation, driver and vehicle safety and standards, insurance, cross-border cross rules and regulations, infrastructure development, highway construction and maintenance, literally anything that affects a trucking business. We also provide our members with group purchasing opportunities for things like safety and compliance products, training and education, and networking opportunities. We are a full service association. Now on to our industry. And here's where I begin to explain why the skill shortage dilemma for our industry and exists and why it's such a hard problem for our, uh, uh, for our industry to deal with. The trucking industry is quite large when you consider it an aggregate. In terms of provincial GDP, we are larger than the forestry sector. But when you look at the makeup of the industry, most trucking companies are quite small. About 95% of the 23,000 trucking companies in this province operate 10 trucks or fewer. Remember that as I go through the rest of my presentation because it's a significant factor in explaining why addressing the skill shortage is so difficult. Now back in 2006, 
Our board recognized that our industry was facing a serious skills shortage, and we developed an industry HR strategic plan that was made up of four key components. None of it is rocket science, and I, and I expect that every other industry sector has, has very similar pillars. We decided, as you can see, that we were going to focus on communications and promotion, attraction, recruitment and retention, truck driver training standards and training financing, and driver licensing. Now, in terms of communication and promotion, we needed to inform the community about our need for people and to promote the industry. Our industry likes to keep a low profile, so just raising awareness about the opportunities in our industry was and remains absolutely critical. Most people would know that the trucking industry needs truck drivers, but they probably don't think about the admin staff, the safety professionals, IT support, and custom specialists that we also need. There are a host of other occupations that need to be filled. Another component is attraction, recruitment, and retention. Some national research that was conducted by the Canadian Trucking Human Resources Sector Council found that our industry was actually pretty good at attracting people. What we were not very good at was keeping them. The study found that about, about half the people who join our industry leave within 12 months. And unfortunately, they never come back. Worse still, they tell people that they've had a horrible experience. So when you think back to the promotion challenge, negative word of mouth publicity is probably the worst thing that could happen. That's a problem that we have been working hard to address, and I'll tell you a bit about what we've been trying to do. Our third component is the driver training standard. We don't have one. We need to improve driver training as well as the financing available for training programs. And I'm speaking only about British Columbia, but the situation is not much different in any other province except for Ontario and Quebec. Today, because we don't have a mandatory professional driver training standard, there is no clear and simple path to becoming a professional truck driver. Today, most people who do take training take just enough training to pass a class one driver's license. And I'm sure all of you have seen advertise, advertisements from private driver training schools saying that one weekend of training would get you a class one license and a job. Unfortunately, too many people believe that and it has really hurt our industry. Now, the fourth component is the class one driver license test. At this point, obtaining a class one driver license is, un, is unfortunately the de facto minimum standard of entering our industry. If this test were made more difficult, it would raise the required skill level of new class one recipients, and it would also help to support the adoption of a professional driver training standard. Now, I'm gonna segue here to a couple of slides that provide context about the trucking industry's current labor force demographics. This slide illustrates that truck drivers have aged more quickly than the total labor force. The average driver age increased 3.7 years between 1996 and 2006, while the average increase in age was two years across all occupations. This can be interpreted to mean that the trucking industry is not doing as well as other industries in attracting young people, and in fact that's true. We're attracting young people at half the rate that other industry sectors are. Now there are fewer immigrants working as truck drivers than are working in the total labor force, and there are a few explanations for this. Truck driving is not recognized as a skilled occupation in Canada, so people with that kind of experience in their home country don't qualify under the federal government's skilled trades category to enter Canada. And as I mentioned earlier, there is no clear training path for individuals, and if you're an immigrant, there is no foreign qualification recognition. And because most trucking companies are small, they don't have the resources to conduct their own training or to conduct their own reviews, and so they would prefer to hire a known quantity, which usually means a family member or a friend. So here's what we've been doing. It's, it's not all bad news, people, but here's what we've been doing to achieve these strategic object objectives that I introduced a few slides ago. Now, we've identified our tar target audiences, and if you listen closely to what Claudine said, our ta target audiences are exactly like hers. And I'm, exactly, I'm sure they're exactly like everybody else's. We're more in need because we happen to be more, much more focused on men. So we do really need to um, try and reach a more diverse labor force. So in terms of um, our programs, 
Our most ambitious program is the development of a 16 credit high school level commercial driver training program that's going to be offered at NORCAM Secondary School in Kamloops beginning in September 2016. This program has the potential to funnel high school graduates directly into the trucking industry because we'll be matching students with employers while they are in high school. These are students who will not only have chosen this stream, but will have had to have passed a screening process to make sure that they have the right aptitude and the right attitude for our industry. Attitude counts for a lot because we don't want people who exhibit risky behavior and you can, you can I'm sure, figure out why. Employers will be committing to participating in the program by offering work placements and tours and making presentations. It is the first high school program of its kind in Western Canada, and we have already heard from other high schools in, in several school districts who want to know how the program is going to work. Now, as I mentioned earlier, BCTA is also advocating for a professional driver training standard for those people who want to enter the profession at a later stage in life. And this training would be no different than what would be required of an airline operator, uh, airline pilot, railway operator, plumber, or electrician. It's an occupation that is highly risky and is required to operate heavy equipment amongst the driving public. And I don't know about you, but some of the driving public should not be driving. <laughs> now, the profession is highly technical and it can be highly specialized. Because of a variety of circumstances, we find that many people who enter the trucking industry do so as a second or even a third career. And we're finding more and more husbands and wives who are entering the industry together so that they can spend time together. So what a novel idea. A recognized training standard will also open the door to things like student loans, grants, and other financial support, which is not available today. That is important to help trainees with financial obligations that exist if they're going to be making a career change in midlife. We've developed some other resources specifically tailored to the immigrant community that I'll speak about in more detail in a couple of slides. Now I'm calling everything on this slide policies, but technically they could be regulatory or legislative solutions. Essentially these are all public policies that have an effect on how we address the driver shortage. I mentioned the driver license test standard already, but you may not know that the instructor and curriculum standards for class one private driver training schools are pretty minimal. A low standard doesn't mean that there are no good class one driver training schools, but it does mean that as a group, they tend to only focus on trying to coach their students to pass the class one driver license test. So if you compare BC's class one driver license test to the test in other provinces, we're about the same, and in some cases, better. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't aim for a higher standard. Now, minimum age refers to the youngest age you can obtain a Class 1 license. Today in BC, that's 19, but in every other Western Canadian province, it's 18. Now, to go back to the NORCAM Secondary School program, most of those kids will graduate at age 18. That means most of those kids will have to wait one year before they can gain a job as a professional truck driver in our, in our sector. Now, uh, we had one mother approach the school to say, look, my kid can't even remember to make his bed in the morning. He's not going to be able to remember anything he learned in school one year later. So that's something that we're trying to address. The good news is that the provincial government seems to understand the problem and is willing to work with us to try and develop a solution. So uh, I am confident that we're going to be able to find something find a solution for these graduates before the new program starts. Now, I got the five minute signal, so I'm going to move on here um, to national policies. BCTA is working with our National Sector Council, other provincial trucking associations, and the Canadian Trucking Alliance to revise the National Occupational Standard for Commercial Operators. An NOS is the prescribed way to describe the skills required for various occupations. Having an up-to-date and validated NOS helps to inform and influence the categorization of an occupation in the National Occupational Classification. The reason we're doing this work is to make the case that the truck driver occupation should be classified as semi-skilled and not unskilled as it is today. This change in designation would be a game changer for us because it would have implications for access to student loans and grants, development of a training standard, and eligibility of immigrants with truck driving experience to enter Canada as skilled trades workers. 
So these are some resources that BCTA has developed or is in the process of, of developing for employers in the BC trucking industry. Um, information about a, cup, a couple of these are available online. So I, I would encourage you to go there uh, to look at that. But I'm going to move on to um, the resources that we've developed specifically for immigrants. This is a copy of the International Trucking Reference, and it's one of our most recent publications. When immigrants with professional dr truck driving experience do show up at the door, because they do come to Canada uh, through other means, uh, not as a, a skilled trades worker, um, very often employers won't look at them seriously because there's too much risk and too much they don't know about these candidates and their work experience, and it's too difficult for them to find out because they are small companies. It's not like reading the resume of a Canadian-born driver. This reference is designed to bridge that knowledge gap by focusing on 10 countries and describing things like those countries' road network and terrain, common vehicle configurations, and their safety rules and regulations. The reference allows employers to make a more informed decision about an immigrant's resume and work experience, and it contains basic information about how to effectively interview immigrants by considering things like unintentional biases in interview questions. Our intent is to build on the base of 10 countries and to add more as it becomes clearer which countries are contributing the most professional truck drivers to Canada. The iDrive assessment tool is related to the reference guide in the sense that it is also focused on immigrants, but in the long run, we expect that it will have other applications. iDrive stands for Immigrant Driver Readiness, Industry Validation and Engagement which is why we call it iDrive, since no one will ever remember the other name. <laughs> iDrive consists of four components, industry knowledge, essential skills, employability characteristics, and driving skills. It is a six-hour assessment that results in a written report. The assessment tool is currently being pilot tested for the second time, and then it will be refined and finalized. Because there is no equivalency or certification process for professional drivers, this is designed to provide some quality assurance and a synopsis of an experienced professional driver's qualifications. In time, we hope to expand the use of this assessment so that it becomes a trusted source of information for the skills and qualifications of Canadian-born drivers as well. So as I hope you've seen, whoops, the skill shortage for the, our industry is serious, but we are doing what we can for our members and industry to address this challenge. There is still much work to do, but we are moving in the right, right direction, and we uh, look forward to working with you as we do that. Thank you for your interest in our industry.